In this video, we're going to focus on finding uh, the intervals where the function is increasing, where it's decreasing. We're going to talk about how to identify the relative extremum where the maximum and minimum is located, and also how to uh, find the critical points. So let's say if we have this equation, y is equal to 2 minus x squared. Let's analyze it graphically. So this is going to be a downward parabola because we have uh, negative x squared, but because it's plus 2, it's going to start at 0 comma 2. And it, this is just a rough sketch of the graph. It looks something like this. On the left side, you can see the function is increasing. That means the first derivative is positive. On the right side, the function is decreasing. The first derivative is negative. At the top, that's where the first derivative is equal to 0. And that's where you have your local maximum. So that's how you can analyze it graphically, but let's analyze it algebraically. So for a problem like this, what you need to do is find the first derivative and set it equal to 0. The derivative of 2 is 0, and the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. So if you set it equal to 0, you get x is equal to 0 if you divide both sides by negative 2. So if we make a number line, let's plug in some test points. Let's plug in a number that's greater than 0. Let's say if we plug in 1. If you plug in 1 into the derivative, you're going to get a negative answer. If you plug in, let's say, negative 2 into a negative 2x, you're going to get a positive answer. And that's what we see here. To the left of 0, the first derivative is positive. To the right, it's negative. So when it changes from positive to negative, you have a local maximum. If it changes from negative to positive, then you have a local minimum. Zero is the critical point. Now, whenever the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. So it's increasing um, in this section here between negative infinity and zero. The function is decreasing when the first derivative is negative. So it's decreasing from zero to infinity. So let's try another example for the sake of practice. So let's say if y is equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. So using what you know, feel free to pause the video and find the critical point, any local maximums or minimum, and also find the where the, end of, where the function is increasing and decreasing. So first let's find the first derivative. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of x is just 1. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So the first derivative is equal to 4x minus 8. Let's set that equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do is factor out a 4. And you can see that our critical point is x is equal to 2. So then let's make a number line. It's easier to plug it in into this form. Let's say if we plug in a number greater than 2. Let's say if we plug in 3 for x. 3 minus 2 is positive. If we plug in 1 for x, 1 minus 2 is negative. So we know that the function is increasing um, between 2 and infinity. It's decreasing between negative infinity to 2. Now the fact that it goes from negative to positive what we have here is we have a minimum. So we have a local min at 2. And this is also the critical point. x equals 2. So that's the location of the minimum. If we want to find a minimum value, you need to take your x value and plug it in to get y. So let's go ahead and do that. So y is equal to 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 6. 2 squared is 4 times 2, you get 8. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 6. So negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10. 
So this is negative 2. So we have a local min located at x equals 2, which has a value of negative 2. And the critical point is 2 comma negative 2. So the x tells you the location. And the y variable tells you the, the value of the minimum or the maximum, whichever you have. So try this example. Let's say if y is equal to 2x squared, I mean 2x cubed, rather, plus 3x squared, minus 12x plus 8. So go ahead and find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. Find any maximum or minimums, and find the critical points as well. So let's start with the first derivative. The derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared, and for 3x squared is 6x, and the derivative of 12x is just 12, and for 8 is 0. So we're going to set the first derivative equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x. Now notice that the GCF, the greatest common factor, is 6. So we can factor out a 6. 6x squared divided by 6 is x squared, and negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. So now we need to factor this trinomial. So think of two numbers that multiply to negative 2, but add to the middle coefficient 1. This will be none other than 2 and negative 1. So this is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 1. And at this point, you can set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 1. And now we can make our sign chart. So let's plug in a number that's greater than 1. If we plug in 2 for x, 2 minus 1 is positive, and 2 plus 2 is positive. So above 1, everything is positive. Between negative 2 and 1, let's say if we plug in 0, 0 minus 1 is negative. 0 plus 2 is positive. A negative and a positive makes a negative. Now, if we plug in a number less than negative 2, like negative 3, negative 3 plus 2 is negative. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative. Two negatives make a positive. So therefore, our critical points are negative 2 and 1. Negative 2, is it a maximum or a minimum? What would you say? Notice how it changes from positive to negative. That is a maximum. See, it's increasing and then it's decreasing. And at 1, we have a minimum. It's decreasing and then it's increasing. The function is increasing on the interval from... It's increasing here, where the first derivative is positive, and in this section, too. So from negative infinity to negative 2, union, 1 to infinity. That's where the function is increasing. It's decreasing from negative 2 to 1. Now I want to show you something else too. Let's say if you find your first derivative, f prime of x or y prime, and you get something that looks like this, x plus 2, x minus 1 squared, x minus 2, and x minus 4 to the 4th power. And this one, let's say, it's to the 3rd power. And let's say you made your sign chart with the values negative 2, 1, 2, and 4. Now, there's a quick and easy way to find what the signs are. Once you know what the first one is, you can use the exponents, the multiplicity, which is the exponents of each factor to know what the sign is going to be without even having to plug in the number. Now, the first number you want to plug in is something that's greater than 4. Let's say 5. The reason why it's easier that way, 5 minus 4 is positive, 5 minus 2 is positive, 5 minus 1 is positive, 5 plus 2 is positive. So it's going to be positive. Now, we got this critical number, the 4, from this factor. Notice that the multiplicity is 4. 
whenever the multiplicity is even, referring to the exponent, it's not going to change signs across that number. If it's odd, it will change sign. So the multiplicity for this factor is even, so it's going to stay positive. Now let's move on to the next one, um, this factor, where we got the critical point at x equals 2. The multiplicity is odd, so it's going to change sign across 2. And at 1, the multiplicity is even, so it's going to stay the same. And at negative 2, it's odd, so it's going to change sign. Now all of these points are critical points because the first derivative is 0 at those points. So we have four critical points for this particular problem. But now let's identify our local extrema, our local max and local min. At negative 2, do we have a local max or min? What would you say? Whenever it goes, it switches from positive to negative, where it goes from increase into decreasing, that's a local max. If it doesn't change sign, it's like a saddle point. So 1 and 4 are saddle points. At 2, it changes from decreasing to increasing, so um, that's a minimum. And that's about it. Only at those two points does it change sign. So now where is the function increasing? And when is it decreasing? The function is increasing when the first derivative is positive. So it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 2 union 2 to 4, union 4 to infinity. Now keep in mind, um, at 4 is neither increasing nor decreasing. f prime of 4 is 0, so we have a horizontal tangent line. When the slope is 0, it's not increasing or decreasing. The slope has to be positive for it to be increasing. Now the function is decreasing in this interval between these two, this interval here only. So it's decreasing from negative 2 to 1, not including 1, and from 1 to 2. So that's it for this video. That's how you can find when the function is increasing, decreasing, um, how to find local maximum using the first derivative test. So thanks for watching.